Hello, my loves, and welcome to your reading. Now, before we get started, please do remember that energy is interchangeable, so feel free to take messages. Flip them, twist them, reverse them, however you see fit. If it does not fit, please do not try to force it. Just feel free to check your chart and check your other placements. Past, present, or future, you tell me, as time is fluid and we are all on different timelines. And as always, please do remember that these readings are for entertainment purposes only. And with that said, let's get right on to it, shall we? What do we have going on? Oh, I guess this would help. <clears throat> Starting off with Aries and first house. What do we have going on for Aries and first house? It's a hard not life for us. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so your energy. I feel like you're going through a bit of a spiritual growth spurt. This is like, we're learning, we're learning. Um, some of you, there could be a form of ascending. I'm just saying some of you are just in an energy where think about it. Um, now the higher thing can also be our sense of conformity routine and there's a sense of breaking out of the box breaking the mold breaking out of one's routine uh there could be some form of expansion in one's own personal beliefs and mindsets if you're someone who was set in your ways or it had to be this or had to be that there's a sense of i don't know it just feels like some form of breakthrough moment that's kind of shifting things you're learning that not everything is as it seems not everything is just one way you know it's like broadening your own sense of perspective <clears throat> now good things you could hear from someone who you want who you've wanted to talk to um there could be someone who you've wanted to talk to you could get word from this person um i feel like you're going to learn something you're going to get some form of key information there's going to be some form of key information that kind of sheds some form of light for you and there's something about it you're going to hear something whether this is you're overhearing a conversation or you're having a conversation with someone or there could even be a conversation that you have with someone who you haven't spoken to in a while and there's something about this conversation that i don't know i i, I can't tell if it's the conversation itself if some of you it's going to be different some of you it's going to be the actual conversation itself but for some of you it could be especially if there's someone who you haven't spoken to in a while it's like something about having a conversation with this person it does something for you it ha it's i'm hearing that song you elevate me there's some form of elevation within you because of having this form of uh interaction with this person this conversation whether this is someone who you know who you haven't spoken to or you know this is just a conversation with someone in general there's an expansive conversation to be had now what to avoid don't allow people to take kindness for weakness. Now, also, don't take other people's kindness for weakness. This is like the energy of someone can give this, someone can take it type energy. And it's like, uh, don't take people for granted. Don't take someone's kindness for weakness. Don't. If there's someone who you haven't spoken to in a while, because I'm drawn to the turtles and the whole sense of, uh, you know, swimming around there and the, her back is turned. It's like if there's someone whose back is turned to you, you and you haven't spoken to them and now all of a sudden you're speaking again right you're back on speaking terms don't take things for granted don't take a person's kindness for granted uh, this is like all right say like say if you have a falling out with someone right this could even be like a mother figure or a sister or a sibling whoever right it's like say you know how some people they just feel like you know if you give an inch they could they could take a mile it's 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 that's what it feels like someone uh, all right how do i explain it it's like don't take advantage like you know how some people they feel like you know well, that's okay we you know you know how people set in pattern um the way a connection is going to be and it's like um well we're back on good terms now so now things can go back to the status quo the back to back to the way they were it's like don't do that don't be that don't be that don't take something for granted don't take things for granted. Don't take a person for granted either. Now, surprise. 
it feels like things are moving in the right direction for you. Now, again, there could be a sense of whether you, you could be surprised that, you know, someone is back in your life and there's a sense of forward movement with this person, or, you know, this could even be someone stopping by to see you, you stopping by to see someone you could meet someone. Or like I said, if this is in regards to someone who, you know, this could be very well. There could be someone who you cross paths with, who, whether it's you overhear a conversation that they're having, or you have a conversation with them. And there's something about this conversation that kind of opens your perspective up. See, true. Um, it opens up things for you. It broadens your own horizon, the sense of how you're viewing things moving forward. It's going to change the way that you proceed moving forward, whether this is a reconnect or not, there's something in regards to a conversation that it's going to alter your perception and how you move forward. Um, so yeah, Aries first house, that's what I got for you. That's your read. Next up, Taurus, it's second house. What do we have going on for Taurus and second house, please? Leave before left. Okay. So we are learning where things stem from. All right. Um, okay. So right now you could just be feeling a bit alone, isolated. Um, yeah, this feels like someone who's kind of going through their own form of inner workings, um, inner journey. You could feel like you are isolated. This is like the someone, all right, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. This is like the energy of someone who's like, everyone always leaves, but good news is you're going to, you're, you're working on abandonment issues is what this feels like. It's like nothing for nothing. This feels like someone who is so dead set on this idea, on this notion that everyone leaves, that they turn their back first. It's like, well, I'm going to turn my back and leave you because everyone leaves. So you, I know you're going to leave me too. And it's like, these issues stem back to family issues, 10 of cups. There's a sense of mm, restoring some form of balance. There is a make or break moment of delving into the depths of one's own inner workings. Why do we turn our back? Why do we isolate ourselves? And then we're upset that we're alone and we hold this mentality that, you know, everyone leaves but it's not everyone leaving you. If you are the one who is in fact turning your back on everyone, you are abandoning them. And by doing that, you're abandoning a part of yourself, that part that yearns for connection. You know, this could even be something that you do with friends or family or, or um, it feels like this stems back from family issues though, but this could even be someone who turns their back on family as well. Um, I don't know, but it feels like whatever abandonment issues that you have, um, whatever this is that it just feels like you're working on them. You're going to have a breakthrough moment and, um, what to avoid. Look with that justice card there, justice is a form of balance. There's a sense of if you're, if you know what the problem is, right? Don't ignore it. See, Justice is also, yes, it's the card of karma. It's a card of balance and restore, uh, restorative uh, elements as well. You know, we're balancing the scales. You have a chance to basically recalibrate your own personal scales, uh, your own personal scales as you delve into your own inner workings and realize where some form of abandonment issues are, especially if you're someone you're swift to turn your back and isolate yourself. It's like, uh, no man is an island, but someone who goes out of their way to make themselves an island, right? Regardless. Um, it's like, don't ignore, don't ignore the issue. If you know that you're someone to quickly, it's easier to turn. I don't know why I run away. Ooh, you turn your back and run away, right? Because it's easier to turn your back and run away and abandon ship before you get abandoned. It's like, don't ignore those issues. Then when those issues come, when that urge comes, you face it head on. It's like, instead of turning your back and running, what if you stay? What if you face it head on? Because what if you're wrong? Not everyone leaves. What if someone actually stays? 
people want to stay, but if you don't allow them, you don't give them the chance, then you turn your back and then you're sitting there alone and you're wondering, well, why am I alone? Oh, I'm alone because everyone leaves. Is it everyone leaves or are you just turning your back on everyone because you're automatically jumping to the conclusion, well, I already know they're going to leave or something's going to happen, da, 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 you know? Don't be so swift to jump the gun. Now, surprise, eight of wands. There's a sense of moving and things moving in the right direction. I feel like you're going to have an aha moment, boom, and it's going to hit where things stem from. There's a sense of working on abandonment issues. This says abandonment issues all over it. And there's a sense of recalibrating one's scales. This could be you're having a conversation with someone. This could be on the road again. Maybe you're driving, you're on the road, and, you're on, and uh, you know, next thing you know, you know, you have this aha moment where it kind of clicks, you know, maybe you're reminiscing, thinking about things that in regards to family and this and that, or maybe how you want to have a family or you just, I know we'll get there, the human connection. You want some form of connection. There's going to be some form of aha moment that kind of comes out of nowhere and it's all going to click. And it's like all the elements like kind of, come, you know, connecting the dots. Dun, 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 and you're going to realize why it is you're so swift to turn your back and abandon ship. And it all stems from uh, deep rooted abandonment issues that stem back to family is what it feels like um, to when you were a kid. And there's a sense of facing them head on and being able to overcome them. So Taurus, second house is what I got for you. That's your read. Next up, Gemini and third house. What do we have going on for Gemini and third house, please? Oh, boy. Save the drama for your mama. It wasn't love. It wasn't love. It was a perfect illusion. Mm -hmm. I like your pants around your feet. Dun, dun, devil under there. I like the way you still say please when you're looking up at me. You're like my favorite damn disease. I don't know why everyone always talks shit about Nickelback. I fucking love Nickelback. I think it's because they're Canadian. Everyone wants to bust balls. Although I don't know why. They are quite a fucking delight. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe someone's Canadian. Uh, take it however it resonates for me to go on that tangent of Nickelback. Um... <laughs> oh Canada, oh Canada. Now I'm seeing fucking maple syrup in the fucking uh what moose. Oh god. All right. Yeah, so someone could have ties to Canada. Um but your energy, it's just like mm, you could be realizing or it's like, you know what? Mm, no. This is learning to catch yourself. You could be dealing with something, but you're also learning from it because it's like um, perhaps under normal circumstances, you're quick with the sword, you're quick with the tongue, you're quick with the rapport, right? And there's a sense of seeing where those things come from. And it's like, you know what? No, we're not doing that today. We're doing this different. We are not going to repeat patterns. Uh, save the drama for your mama. We're not doing this today. You know, this may be how we handled things before, but not anymore. Maybe you were just swift to basically just come in with the comeback. If people like, you know, if someone's having a bad day and then they're snappy and they say or do something towards you. And then normally you could like have a reaction towards it. And it's like you react from the energy that's pushed off to you. It's like, don't be the energy that's tossed at you. Be the energy that basically, you know, you know how they say, uh, don't walk into a room and adjust your energy to fit with them. Be the one that the room, their energy would adjust to you. Yeah, however the fuck it goes. You get the gist of what I'm saying. Um, surprise. Not, no, not surprise. Good stuff. You're going to be able to see it. You're going to be able to see through something. You're going to be able to see something. It's like, um, if you weren't able to see it before, you're going to see it now, whether this is seeing where, where this thing stems from. If you are someone who is prone to react a certain type of way, um, versus respond, you're seeing where it actually comes from. There's a sense of this is being the one in control. It's like having an opportunity to put an end to an unhealthy cycle, to no longer get pulled within the vortex of uh, an unhealthy and toxic dynamic. We're saying no more. And there's a sense of what you didn't see before, light shall be shed upon because you're going to catch yourself wanting. It's like, it's like being caught up in a situation that 
before you may have easily gotten pulled into the vortex of toxicity. And it's like recognizing it, seeing it, recognizing it and cutting the head off and saying, no, not today, not today. Now I see the error of my ways. Now I see where my fault lies in how I would, because everything's give and take, you know, regardless of whatever the situation or circumstance, everyone has their own form of accountability. Uh, even if it's just down to, uh, you know, react versus respond. If you react to something, you get pulled into the vortex versus if you take a moment, take a step back and you respond that's a whole different ball game because that promotes a sense of emotional intelligence. You, your energy is not dictated by what is going on around you. It is by what you deem it to be. It's like you're transmuting the energy and not allowing it to affect you. And by doing that, you are breaking free of toxic and unhealthy patterns. Um, now what to avoid? You have a chance to overcome and cut yourself free of a toxic pattern once and for all. And it feels like you might be tempted. Uh, now, if you are dealing with a situation with someone who could be a bit of a shark, who could be a bit of a pariah and knows how to get your goat, knows how to pull you in to get that reaction, but you're not wanting to react, you want to respond, you have the power to overcome this. Just don't allow this person to pull you in. It's like the harder they try, the you know the, you know how they say the bigger they are, the harder you fall. It, 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 or now I'm seeing like Davy and Goliath. Someone could be a bit religious as well, um, especially for me to get Davy and Goliath. Um, David and Goliath. Uh, yeah, but, um, it's like you have an ability to cut yourself free of the chains that once bound once and for all breaking free, breaking patterns, breaking a toxic cycle. Um, but think of it like a video game, that boss level, right? Now you're dealing with the boss and you have, you have to basically go up a few rounds, you know, it'll keep trying and keep trying. It takes a little longer. So if someone like say if this is in regards to you and someone, right? Regardless of whatever the relationship pertains to, they know how to normally get a reaction out of you. And now all of a sudden you're not reacting. You're responding because you're having light shed on, there's a sense of illumination on something that you never, you didn't see before. You didn't realize before, but because you're able to see it and take that step back now, now we're not allowing ourselves to get pulled into the vortex. So they might try a little bit harder because it's like, well, wait a minute, this, they're not used to, because you have a pattern with this person, right? Regardless of whoever it is. If there's a set pattern, you're seeing what the pattern for what it is and you're breaking, I'm breaking the habit tonight. You're breaking the habit, you're breaking the pattern. Now this person might be a bit thrown off and try to basically go a little extra to try to get that reaction out of you because if, especially if this is someone, this is a set pattern, it's what you do and it throws them off but you have a chance to overcome this and you could both break free of this pattern once and for all. You just have to basically stand your ground. Now, surprise, I feel like you are setting a secure place, uh, uh, setting a secure foundation for yourself and whoever this is, especially if there's some form of tit for tat with someone where, Again, I keep hearing pussycat dolls. You're making me cruel because I'm just wanting you to react. There's a sense of normally you do this back and forth, this unhealthy dance, this unhealthy dynamic where, you know, uh, again, the toxicity of a city of a city to where you basically pull out the worst of each other. It's like, we're not doing that anymore. No, this is done. We are no longer doing this. We are no longer going through this unhealthy dance. It's over stand your ground. Don't allow yourself to get pulled into old habits. And I feel like you and this person will be able to overcome this and move past it once and for all, breaking the habit, breaking the pattern, breaking the cycle. All right. But Gemini third house, that's what I got for you. That's your read. Next up cancer and fourth house. What do we have going on for cancer and fourth house? Oh. Baby, I'm a be a motivation. Mm. Cancer, there you are.
Sometimes you feel like your hands are tied in a situation. Um, okay, so your current energy. Uh, you could be feeling like you're in a bit of a belly of the beast type of situation. That feels like you're, you're you're dealing with, you got some stress. You got some stress. Some of you could just, uh, some of you, maybe you're just dealing with some form of uh, insomnia. Because Nine of Swords can also be an insomniac type of card. You just, or you, you're, you're stressing. You have some form of stress and anxieties over, over something. Um, this could be something that you kind of keep to yourself. Because um, we notice the shark in waters. Uh, some of you, there's a sense of light being shed upon where certain things are stemming from, whether that's, you know, certain fears or anxieties or, you know, uh, some of you, this is just in regards to your sleep pattern is off schedule because we have the light breaking through. And um, again, Nine of Swords can be a bit of an insomniac card. Some of you are just having difficulty sleeping, um, something with the sleep pattern, something's out of whack. Um, but there could also be like uh, low key anxiety and stuff like that in regards to something you're kind of stressing over. Um, could even be in regards to a judgment call that was made, a decision. Um, but let's see. <clears throat> Good stuff. For those of you who feel like, uh, especially if you're stressing over where it's like, oh, because I'm hearing that, oh no, not again from that song. Um, Love Knocks You Down. Uh, that doesn't have to be in regards to love. It's just that, that one thing from the music video itself where it's like, oh, no, not again. Maybe you just feel like you're going through, now I'm seeing Groundhog's Day. You're going through a bad loop of Groundhog's Day, and it's like, oh, no, not again. Did I make the right decision? Maybe I shouldn't have done this, da, da, da. or do I really want to do this again? Um, it just feels like things aren't going to be like they were. And there's Because remember, 501s can also be repetition. Uh, Continue to do what you always done, continue to get what you always got, or, you know, doing the same thing over and over again to no avail, especially lined up next to that nine of swords. It's just like, you could just feel like it's all for nothing. It's like, why? I don't know. Some of you, this could be in regards to a work matter as well, because of that ace of pentacles. It could, maybe you feel like, you know, uh, money's taking a while to basically, you know, get where you want it to be. Um, yeah, especially with the three of wands, right? Um, but it just feels like, there's some form of situation that there's some form of frustration. Uh, you could feel like you're going through a bit of a groundhog's day, a bit of a loop or something, and you're dealing with some form of stress. It just feels like there's going to be a good turnaround in whatever regards to that situation is. So whatever it is that you're feeling frustrated uh, with, with that um, five of wands, um, wherever your frustration lies, there's going to be some form of silver lining and overcoming whatever it is. Um, so yeah, it feels like whatever your stresses and anxieties, because this is literally like stress and anxiety. So whatever your stress and anxiety has been about, it feels like there's no need to be so stressed out and anxious over whatever, because it feels like there's going to be a good turnaround. I mean, the five of wands is literally in the good stuff. Um, now what to avoid, um, just relax and like kind of go with the flow. Look, slow and steady gets the race. Don't stress over when it, especially if you're stressing over money, don't do that because it just feels like, you know, Ace of Pentacles, again, so, what comes fast don't last, but what lasts won't come fast. So if any of you, like say if you're stressing over money or something like that, it just feels like relax. Don't stress it out too much. Just like kind of learn to go with the flow and enjoy the ride because again, what comes fast won't last but what lasts won't come fast. And this feels like, especially if this is in regards to like a financial standpoint, you have some really good money coming towards you. S -s really, something really good in regards to your money coming towards you, but this would be something that lasts more long-term. Like this is like long-term money where um, I'm hearing like, like inheritance type money, right? Um, some of you could be getting an inheritance. It's not going to be that for everyone, but for others of you, this is just, you know, you're on the path for making some form of long-term, um, finance is what this feels like. And it just feels like, don't stress it so much. Maybe you're just stressing over money and shit like that. It's like, don't, because it just feels like, again, maybe you're, you're wanting more fat. Like, you know, feel like you're not getting it as fast as you, as, as you want it, or as you need it, whatever. And it just feels like, don't stress it so much because again, I keep hearing, I keep having to emphasize it. What comes fast does not last, but what lasts will not come fast. So you have a sense of good money coming towards you. Um, maybe you feel like you're not where you want to be 
in your career field or, you know, maybe, you know, you're waiting for that day that, you know, the boss sees you and gives you that fucking promotion once and for all. And it's like, look, it takes time. You know, you got to crawl before you walk, but it feels like things will get better. Um, if you're, if you're stressing over getting a promotion, right. Or maybe some of you are just stressing over, I, I, I want, I need to be hired. You know, some of you could literally be stressing over getting an actual job. You know, the right one will come when it's meant to, right. Um, so don't lose faith, you know, don't feel like you're down and out regard. I, I feel like this has to do between money, stress, um, and work. I do. I don't know. Take it however it resonates to you, but, um, surprise, look, something's going to happen. Something's going to come in. You're going to get a win. That's what this feels like. You're going to get some form of win. And it's like, I really needed that. There's some form of whim uh, whim, listen to me, win coming your way. There's some form of ship. It's going to be a big one too. It's a big win. You have a big win coming, whether this is you've been waiting to get that call back to get the job, or you've been waiting to get the promotion, or you've just been waiting for, you know, money to get to a place where you're good or whatever it is you're stressing over. It just feels like you have a big win coming. Um, so just relax, just learn to kind of go with the flow. Look, life has its ebbs and flows regardless of the situation, right? It's learning to just like kind of go along with them. I think about it if, if you get caught in the current, right? Don't go against it, go with it. Learn to go with the flow and things will come in a lot faster and flow a lot more smoothly. Go against it and it's going to take longer and you're going to feel exhausted. Hence that exertion type energy, you know? Uh, over here. So you have a big win coming in. There's some form of ship coming in. It's going to be big. It feels like a financial ship, a big win. Um, so just relax. Everything's going to work. I keep hearing that song. Don't worry about a thing because every little thing is going to be all right. So, and I'm also seeing the turtles from Nemo. It was like, first I was like, whoa, then it was like, whoa, then it was like, whoa, you know, just go along with it, you know? So Cancer, fourth house is what I got for you. That's your read. Next up, Leo and fifth house. What do we have going on for Leo and fifth house? Aries literally had that same exact card in the same exact spot. So if you have Aries in your chart or dealing with one, you might want to check that out. Hmm. Feels like someone had an opportunity and they blew it. All right, let's see. I heard play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Someone could have played a stupid game, won a stupid prize. This feels like someone had an opportunity and they blew it. All right. A three of swords, your energy. You could feel like, you know, you're hurting. You're, you, you broke my heart because I couldn't dance. But now I'm back. But, you know, I can't really shake it down. But I don't you love me. Don't know where that came from. Um, but you could feel heartbroken. You could feel like, you know what? You really hurt me. You broke my fucking heart. You know, I'm not gonna lie. Some of you could be having light shed upon you that you hurt someone that you broke their heart. Take it however it resonates. There's some form of light being shed upon. Uh, this is your energy. So this could be you. You could be having light shed upon you where it's like, you realize this person is a shark. They're a piranha. Um, they're never going to change, uh, for others of you, this could be, you know, you're realizing that, you know, you fucked up, you hurt someone, you know, it's like light being shed on parts of you that you didn't want to view before and how your actions affect someone else. Take it however it resonates. <clears throat> Good news. There's some form of situation where you feel like there's some form of restriction, it just feels like if you feel like your hands are tied in a situation, uh, there's a sense of releasing control. Uh, if you feel like you're being restricted in regards to something, that restriction is going to be, you know, relinquished. Um, some of you, someone could be getting out of jail. I'm just saying this could, oh, I heard get out of jail free card for some of you. 
For some of you who, who are the ones who it's being, light's being shed that you feel like you're the one who fucked up and you, you're you now having light shed upon parts of yourself that you didn't want to look at or you didn't realize that were there. Um, it just feels like, uh, uh, it's like, how am I going to get myself out of this? It feels like there's some form of get out of jail free card in regards to the situation. You might have another chance. You might have a chance to redeem yourself in regards to a situation. I don't know. There's some, there's something in regards to some form of get out of jail free card, uh, in regards to a situation. If you in fact are someone who hurt someone, I don't know. Take that however it resonates to you. I honestly, I'm not going to lie. I don't like the energy. I don't, I don't, because if you hurt someone, you know, that's no look. Okay. Whatever. Um, now for others of you, others of you, you are just learning to let go. You are learning to let go of things beyond your control, beyond your means. You are learning to let go. Like say if you were the one who were hurt, someone hurt you, someone dug the knife in, you are learning to let go of things that are out of your control, right? You can't control how people treat you, but you can control who you allow within your life, who you allow access to. Um, you control whether that person has the ability to do it again. <clears throat> now, what to avoid? If someone hurt you, avoid giving, especially with the Queen of Pentacles, uh, there's a sense of kindness to a fault. Uh, avoid having a sense of kindness and generosity to a fault. Don't give to those who could care less about you, who would rather take the knife and cut your little fin off, you know? Uh, realize you're a mermaid. Mermaids are rare, beautiful, mystical beings, mystical gems. And if someone doesn't see what they have or value what they have when it's there in front of them, it's not your place to try to make them see it. Value yourself well enough to turn around and say, you know what, this isn't for me then. You know what? I know what I bring to the table. And one day someone will see that. And it just this day, it's not you. Now, also what to avoid. If you are someone who in fact hurt someone, right? And somehow, some way, there's some form of get out of jail free card to get yourself out of a situation that you got yourself into. And now there's a sense of making things right. If someone who you didn't see who they were, they didn't, you didn't see the value. You didn't realize what you had when it was in front of you. If by some sheer chance you have, you come to find some form of get out of jail free card that you, this person is willing to forgive you and whatever, right? That they're willing to let you back in. Do not take it for granted. Do not take it as kindness and weakness. Do not take them for granted. Do not take people for granted, period, regardless of the circumstance. Do not take anyone for granted. Do not take advantage of a kind and caring heart also is what I want to say. Now, surprise. So take a look at me now. If someone hurt you, you're going to be surprised to find out just how much this person truly feels bad. They truly regret what they did. They truly miss you. They truly regret um, what, that fucking song. What is it? Against All Odds? So take a look at me now. Hold on. I got to look up the fucking lyrics. It's a thing I can't replace or some shit. I don't fucking know. Um, There's something. There's, there's that one hook where he gets really loud. All right, hold on. Against all on lyrics. Um, how come I just want to walk away just like you leave without a chance? Or I stand here take another breath with you. Oh, you're the only one who really knew me. At all. Okay, where is it? So, t okay, here we go. Here we go. So, take a look at me now. Well, there's just an empty space, and there's nothing left here to remind me. Just the memory of your face. Oh, shit. Now take a look at me now. Because there's just an empty space. But to wait for you is all I can do. And that's what I've got to face. Wow. Take a good look at me now. Because I'll still be standing here. And you coming. Oh, there it is. And you coming back to me is against all odds. It's a chance I've got to take. If someone hurt you, they miss the shit out of you. And they want you back. 
Now, if you're the one who hurt someone and you feel like it's against all odds and you want them back, there could be, you could be surprised to find out that, you know, regardless of what happened, this person does still, they are still hurt, but they also do still miss you and care for you. Hence, if there is some chance that somehow you are able to get in their good grace again, it just feels like they'll take advantage of it. And again, for those of you who something was done to you, this person, they are truly regretting. You see the dolphin is literally looking at the mermaid. It's like, now they see. Now they see what they didn't see when it was in front of them. And now they are really deep in their feels, missing them. This could even be someone who is a bit of a shark, a bit of piranha, who's only looking for a good time. You know, I'm drawn to the dolphin. We have sharks over here. And then over here, we have the dolphin. Dolphins fuck for fun. This could be someone who's basically, you know, just looking to get a nut, you know, Asa wants. And they had an opportunity for something that could have been so much more, but then they blocked it because, you know, they made decisions, they did things, and uh, they didn't see the potential of what was there when it was in front of them. It took losing you to realize, you know, what they had in you, what they could have had with you. Um, and there's a lot of deep regret, but again, if you in fact are the person who did someone else wrong, um, much is on the outside. Cause you notice it's water and it's mind and, and emotions over here. But then we have that one card for uh, earthly type measure on the outside. This person could look like they've turned their back and they're just more focused on whatever else they got going on in front of them. And they're happy. What you'd be surprised to know is that, uh, but they still miss you. Deep down, hidden within their emotions, there's still a sense of missing and looking back, reflecting. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Take that however it resonates to you, but Leo, fifth house is what I got for you. That's your read. Next up, Virgo in sixth house. What do you have going on for Virgo in sixth house? Keeps getting bullshit. You know, I've I've thought possibly pregnant. Um just be careful of getting pregnant. Uh there could there you you can find out pregnancy, you can find out you're pregnant. Someone Okay, no, put that back in. Eight of Wands wanted to show itself. Uh be careful. This could be oh boy. Oh, this is where okay, there could be crossing a line that is Ooh, I hope no one's stepping out. There could be a sense of stepping out on a connection. And then there's like, mm, someone could step out on a connection and get knocked up. I'm just saying. Don't allow yourself to get pulled back in. Let that dog fly. Okay, so right now your energy. Uh, you could feel like you're in a really good place. You're going through a bit of a glow up. Uh, some of you could be getting a bit of a makeover. But it feels like some of you are just actually glowing. You know, feeling really good, radiating, pulling in uh, things there because um, the empress that's that uh, that's that feminine energy there's a sense of you haven't having that gravitational pull pulling things in for yourself feeling like yeah you're just really with really feeling good really within an element um, feeling yourself even feeling like you're in a good place pulling in a lot of good things for yourself now good stuff you have something new coming and you have a potential for something that could turn into so much more. Now, for some of you, be careful though, because you might find yourself really feeling yourself, right? And, um, cause now I'm drawn to the energy of like an empress in reverse. Like this could be someone who's stepping out of character. Just be, be careful. Some of you could find yourself in an element of feeling like you're stepping out of character and, um, you could find an opportunity that comes along to, uh, you know, basically, you know, scratch an itch, right? Let's just put it like that. And um, this is like kind of stepping out of character to get a reaction, even because I'm literally hearing pussy got dolls react. And it's like, you know, don't be a fool, wrap that tool because there's a sense of something could stick. It's like doing something for a specific reason, um, almost like a spiteful type of reason, right? It's like say, like, say if you go through a breakup, right? And then it's like, you know what, in order to get over them, let's get under someone else or on someone else, male or female don't matter. And it's like, uh, the, something could stick, something could stick where it's like, yeah, there could be a baby. Cause I felt that as soon as that Empress card, 
Um, and then boom for that. So, you know, um, but yeah, you have an opportunity for something. Here's the other thing too, because seahorses mate for life, right? So it's like, if you're feeling a little bit out of character or, you know, stepping out of character, cause now I'm also hearing Christina Aguilera, not myself tonight. Some of these could be, uh, stepping out of character and just, you know, like letting your hair down and just going out, have a little fun. This night of fun can turn into something that turns out to be more long-term sticks around a lot longer, you know, whereas you're just looking to have a little fun one time, but this ends up being something more so long-term, especially if, uh, you know, say there's a baby that gets made along the process, whether that's you impregnate someone or someone impregnates you. And then you find yourself wrapped up in whatever with this person for however long. Um, yeah. Um, but <sighs> what to avoid getting pulled in, giving into temptation, getting, look, if any of you are feeling like, uh, you know, stepping out of character and doing something a little bit reckless, um, especially if like, say if any of you went through like a breakup or something, or you're just trying to get a reaction and you know, there are people who will try to get a reaction and go sleep around with other people. Um, just to basically, th cause they think that, oh yeah, that's going to dig the knife. That's really going to get their goat. If I go basically be a you know what, just basically go sleep around with this one and that one. That'll get a reaction out of them. And the only thing you're only, you're only putting yourself in your own negative toxic cycle and that's going to bite you in the ass. It's like, be careful of the decisions that you make because they will come back to haunt you. They will come back to bite. And this feels like decisions being made that can very well bite you in the ass because the, the, some of you, this could be in regards to with a Scorpio as well. You know, it's like someone who it's like you use them as a, as a pawn or someone could be using you as a pawn. Take how it resonates as, uh, or someone who you had an ending, or this could be, you know, trying to manipulate someone who there's some form of ending with. Right. And it's like, I'll show them. I'll show them. No bitch. You're only going to show yourself. So be mindful of that. All right. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, what to avoid, get, don't give into temptation. Don't bite the fruit. Don't get pulled into toxic cycles, toxic patterns. Don't do something like, don't, don't be, don't be that bitch. Don't be that bitch because it's only going to come to bite you back in the ass. Surprise. Look, you're going to have a decision. You're going to have a decision and a decision is going to be made. There's going to be some form of ending with someone and there could be some form of decision where, you know, Oh, this is like, oh, there's no going back after this. If I do this, that's going to be the nail in the coffin. Some of you could choose to literally sleep with someone else as a form of means to kind of prove to yourself, yeah, I'm definitely done with that bitch. Oh, it's nail in the coffin, da, da, da. In which case you are choosing to put yourself into a toxic pattern and it's going to bite you back in the ass. So just, please be mindful of that. Look, I can't get past the energy. That's what it is. That's what it is. Um, so just be careful of that, please. Um. Now, for those of you, if anyone did this to you, if there's someone who you had some form of ending with, right, and they did this to you, you could have something new coming your way. Um, just don't allow yourself to, if you had someone already do this to you, you could have something new coming your way, in which case, you know, you could find yourself, uh, uh, don't allow yourself to get pulled into a toxic cycle where you just use someone to basically get back at another person. Don't do that. Don't be that bitch. Don't use someone, regardless of whatever the situation is, do not use someone as a pawn to get back at someone else. That's not fair to the other person and it's toxic and it's only going to bite you back in the ass in the long haul. All right. Um, and if you are someone who you are doing this to someone, I feel like that's going to bite you back in the ass in more ways than one. If you can get pregnant or get someone pregnant, there could be a pregnancy. It's very heavily emphasized here in the cards. Not only that, I feel like there will be a boomerang effect as well, because on top of that, there's an element of whoever you're purposely trying to hurt by doing this it's going to boomerang where they are going to have a decision where they can get to go be with someone else and not be stuck in the karmic loop and they get to go be happy elsewhere or vice versa. Take it how it resonates. I have to read the energy, how I feel it, but this one has me feeling like my, my mind's in a whirlwind. So Virgo six house, that's what I got for you. That's your read.
Next up, Libra in seventh house. What do we have going on for Libra in seventh house? Money, 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 money. Could be feeling generous. Ooh, ooh, ooh. hello, glow up. Oh, ooh. Well, hello, Libs. You are going to be filling yourself in your element. You're going to be swimming in it. I feel like you're going to be swimming in it. We're in the money. Decisions are being made. Keep your vision. Keep Hold your visions tight of what it is that you are manifesting in for yourself. Ooh. Okay. All right. Make that change. Some of you have chosen to walk away from something that wasn't as fulfilling, taking a chance and going off in a whole new direction. It's like, well, my situation can't get any worse. What, what's going to happen? It's going to get worse than already. Don't, you know what? Don't ever say your situation can't get worse. Where's some fucking wood? Knock on wood. Never say that shit. It can't get any worse. Never fucking say that shit. I don't believe I just fucking said that shit. <laughs> Knock it on fucking wood. Anyway. Some of you could have chosen to walk away for, uh, from one thing that wasn't, uh, it just wasn't what you needed it to be and took a chance in a whole other direction. So take it how it resonates. But you, your energy, it just feels like you're feeling good. Some of you, there could be a sense of, you know, feeling in a very kind, caring, giving nature, um, a lot, really focused on your 3D, what's in front of you? A lot of you are just more so kind of focused on what's at the forefront, your money, your career, your everyday 3D tangible life and responsibility. If you're a parent, your kids, you know, you see the two little ones uh, swimming around in the background. Um, just focusing on what matters, being present in the moment. Now, good stuff. Well, keep doing it, bitch, because you're going to be swimming in it. You're going to be rolling on it. There's some form of change in regards to your money, your status, your career. Uh, it could, some of these could be getting a bit of a makeover. Some of these could be changing your hair. Some of these could be brunette. You could be going blonde, take it however it resonates. Um, but it just feels like, uh, you're going to find yourself going through a bit of a glow up. And I feel like it's in more ways than one. This is like physically, men mentally, emotionally, uh, spiritually, financially. It's like a really big glow up type energy. Now, what to avoid? Keep your eye on the prize. You have a vision. Keep your eye on that prize. Do not allow anything to throw you off course do not allow anything to fuck with the vision that you have for yourself. Keep going. Keep your eye on the prize. Do not allow anything to interfere with what it is that you have set your goal to. Um, now, surprise. Look, all of your hard work, all of your dedication, everything that you've been kind of putting your all into, it's going to pay off in the long haul. And you're going to see. You're going to see why everything had to work out the way it did, why... You know, nothing was ever, I really hope that the microphone's not picking that up. Are you shitting me? Hold on. They are literally, st oh my God. Um, the joys of no longer being in the woods. Um, hopefully the, the thing's not picking that up. Um, that is very distracting. Whatever you've been, whatever difficulties you have been dealing with, it just feels like they are coming to a close. The burden is about to be released and you're going to be able to relax, you know? So say if you've been really busting your ass, burning the midnight oil, going at it in regards to your work, uh, it's not for no avail. Things are going to get better. Uh, the slat, the weight's going to be taken off your shoulders, so to speak. So take that however it resonates. But Libra, seventh house, that's what I got for you. That's your read. Next up, Scorpio in the 8th house. What do we have going on for Scorpio in 8th house? Hmm. What to do, what to do, decisions, decisions. Well, you're going to figure it out. Nobody's going to rain on my parade. Mm. Decisions, all right. Oh, look at that. Judgment. Mm. Okay. So, 
some of you are, I feel like those of you who have been at a crossroads in regards to a situation or uh, in regards to something with someone, there's a sense of cut off type energy. Some of you are finally cutting the head off uh, the snake. Um, some of you are making a decision to cut something out of your life or to cut someone out of your life. That's what this feels like, cutting it out, cutting it out, cutting it out. Some of you are just, you know, cutting out your own bullshit. <laughs> Um, some of you have been at a crossroads in regards to whether you should cut something out or someone out or not. Now, good news. I feel like you're going to make the decision that is correct for you. Um, especially if those of you who it just feels like there may have been something where you might find yourself or you may have found yourself at a difficult uh, decision. Do I cut this out or do I cut this person off? That's kind of what this is given. I just feel like you are going to be good with the decision that you make because it is the correct decision. Some of you, you're cutting someone or something out and it's the best decision you could have ever made. Now, what to avoid? Anyone or anything that fucks with your stability, whatever it is you got going on. You notice in this strength card, they're opening a net. Anything that restricts you, that puts you in a bad place, that puts you in Anyone or anything that disturbs your shit that would put you more so in a bind more than anything, it just feels like avoid that shit. This feels like it could be someone. This does. This feels like cutting someone out. Uh, this feels like you're cutting someone out. It does. That you're making the right decision to cut someone or something out once and for all. And there's a sense of no longer allowing that situation or that person or anything or anyone similar to ever pull you back into their net, their grasp, their grip ever again. That's what this feels like. Um, surprise. It just feels like there could be something that is off in the distance. Uh, the, the three of wands, that's the ships. That's also, you know, waiting. If you think, like, like I'm drawn to um, the, gilded, uh, the gilded tarot, that three of wands. He's standing there and he's looking off into the horizon, right? This is almost like you could literally be standing there and just see something. There could be something that you see or something that kind of crosses your path or, and it's something that crosses your vision. There's going to be something that kind of crosses your vision, crosses your path. And it's going to be the, th the thing that motivates you to cut something off once and for all. That's what this feels like. It's like seeing something, something happens to cross your path with that three of wands. And it's, that's the thing that sparks the match that you finally say enough is enough. And then you cut something or someone out once and for all. And there's a sense of realizing that, um, you're going to see that that was in fact the best decision you could have made. That was the correct decision for you. Um, and there's a sense of not allowing anyone or anything or that person or that thing to basically pull you in or get you in its grasp again. That's what it feels like. When you free yourself from something that does not serve you, keep yourself free. Don't willingly put yourself back up in that net to be, you know, basically hold yourself. Don't hold yourself to a situation or to someone that you know is no good for you. All right. Um, but yeah, I feel like this is all about making the best decision for yourself, the making a judgment call. You're making a judgment call in regards to something could be someone and not allowing yourself to get reeled in again. Um, again, you could see something or, you know, uh, just happen to cross paths with someone or something, or something happens to cross your path. And it's going to be the thing that lights a match under your ass where it's like, you know what, that's enough. And boom, you cut something or someone out once and for all and you free yourself once and for all. And you choose to no longer willingly, uh, you, you choose to no longer be a willing participant to whatever this entails. All right. But Scorpio, eighth house, that's what I got for you. That's your read. Next up, Sagittarius and ninth house. What do we got going on for Sagittarius and ninth house, please? Madness, madness, madness. Oh. Everything's gonna work out. Don't worry about a thing because every little thing is gonna be alright. 
Oh. I'm missing you at all. Missing you at all. Since you've been gone is bullshit because that song is literally about he's trying to act like he don't miss a bitch, but he really does. I ain't missing you. I ain't missing you. It's like literally he's basically declaring how he's lying to his goddamn self. It's like, I can tell myself, I'm not missing you. That's right. I'm not missing you. It's bullshit. Someone's lying to themselves. I'm just saying. And we do have the five of cups. So your energy, you're missing someone. You're in your feels. You're in the blues. You're just be feeling kind of, you're trying to act like you're okay, but you're not. And it's becoming a bit much. It's like, I can't pretend anymore. I can't do it. Some of you are tired of trying to act like everything's okay when it's really not. Um, but that's what this feels like. Trying to act like you're okay when you're really not, you know? Um, now, the good news, it gets better. Things are going to get better. For some of you, this could be in regards to maybe, perhaps you have, um, I'm not a doctor or anything, but some of you, you could have uh, where you have bouts of depression or, you know, bipolar highs and lows where it's just like, you know, you you can feel good and then you cannot. It's like trying to act like you're okay when you're really not. Some use could go suffer from depression or something like that, or or you know whatever. Um, and it's and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that it, it's just like trying to act like uh, everything's okay to the outside world when really on the inside it feels like you're dying, you know, and you're crying and you just you know it's not all right. Um, but it feels like things are going to balance out. Things are going to level out. Some use could end up going choosing to go seek help. Um, there could even, you could even get, find yourself getting put on medication, in which case that's going to help, uh, very much so level things out, um, and really improve your mood is what it feels like. Um, those of you who wanted to deny that you had any form of, uh, disorders when it came to like mood fluctuation, it's like trying to ignore the writing on the wall. It's like, oh, there's nothing wrong with me. But then it hits, it's like someone who has highs and lows and it's like you hit a low that's so low. It's like, you can't ignore them. how low can you go? How low can you drop low? Don't, 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 don't. It's like you, you, you could hit a really all time low. And it's almost like to a point where you hit a point where it's like, even you can't deny it. Like if you were someone, you'd try to deny the fact that, you know, you had this or that. It's like, you can't deny it anymore. And there's a sense of seeking help. Some of you could be seeking help, uh, medical professional help, and it's going to help out uh, very much so. And you're going to be glad that you actually seeked out help. There's nothing wrong with needing help, you know? Um, now what to avoid? The chariot. Uh don't hold yourself back. Don't allow you to be the detriment of yourself and hold yourself back. Look, you decide the way that your life goes. You decide the direction of your life, especially for those of you where it's like you could feel like you're pulled one way or another, especially if it's like in regards to like your emotions, you know, sometimes you feel like you're, you're pulled all over the place. You don't know whether to go left, right, straight or nowhere. And it just feels like when you choose to actually take action, don't just sit around and do nothing, do something. You can't just like, there's a lot of people who will sit and just like kind of dwell upon certain energies and uh, it'll go away. It'll go away. Just try to ignore it when the writing's on the wall and there's nothing wrong. This feels like someone who needs help and there's nothing wrong with needing help. And there's a sense of don't ignore it when you know that you need help. Or if you know that there's something wrong, don't be afraid to get up and go seek the help, go seek the treatment that you need because ultimately you're only taking away from yourself by not doing anything about it. And no decision is a decision. Um, in which case you're going to feel like you're pulled all over the place. Um, so be the one who is in, you, you are the one who is in control of the driver's seat of your life. So don't just let things, especially when it comes to you and your own sense of well being, don't just let them sit to the fall to the wayside. All right. Now, surprise I'm telling you you're going to be feeling really really good this is a sense of feeling renewed feeling uh feeling new feeling indifferent uh just feeling like uh, your cup is actually full your cup is re is replenished i feel like this is a very specific um message a very specific story even if it's for one person look i can't help the messages it's what's come through check a chart check out the placements or houses but this feels like someone who they've denied it for so long and now there's a sense of no longer denying it and seeking help, seeking treatment. And 
there's a sense of feeling new, almost like feeling reborn, feeling rejuvenating and, and being so glad that one actually took the action, made the decision to get up and do something about their situation to, you know, basically choose themselves. And I love it. Sagittarius ninth house is what I got for you. That's your read. Next up, Capricorn and 10th house. What do you got going on for Capricorn and 10th house, please? Ch -ch 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 changes. Don't waste your time on potential, is what I heard. Oh, to our cops. Oof, oof, uh. oh, this could be the past one. Uh, there could be an unexpected return. Yes. There, all right. This feels like there's a. Someone who you had some form of ending with, uh, someone's planning on coming towards you. This could be someone who put you in a third party situation. I'm just saying, um, your energy, it just feels like you're in a good place. You are on the positive, you're feeling like you're on the positive end of karma. You're on the good end, the, the, the tail end of karma, <laughs> the tail end, get it. Um, but just feeling like, uh, you yourself are in a good place, just feeling very, um, it just feels like someone who's in a good place who is on the, the receiving end of good karma. It's like, look, I do unto others as I would do unto myself and, you know, just in a very zen type of energy. That's what it is. It's like a very zen type of energy. Now, good, good stuff. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, good, the good stuff. Good news. Um, there's change coming. Uh, change for the better, um, long change that was long overdue. There's, uh, it feels like you're going to find yourself going through some form of dance of change, but it's for the better. This is something that's going to follow you. There's some positive change that's going to follow you into the long term. Is what it feels like. Um, so there's po there is positive things coming your way, things that will affect you in the long term with that turtle and pentacle energy. Um, but things, so if you're feeling like you're on the receiving end of good karma, you are correct because it feels like you have more good things coming your way. Um, a lot of positive change, uh, things that are long overdue, but things that are also going to follow you for a long time. Now, what to avoid wasting your time on things not worth investing in. Uh, do not waste your time investing yourself. Also do not, do not waste your time investing in, in potential. There's so many people who will literally waste so many years of their life on a situation or a person because they see the potential. Don't waste your time on potential. Only invest in what you, what you know to be true, not what it could be, but what it actually is. Don't invest your energy. Don't put all your eggs in a basket of potential. Only bet on what you actually see right before you, you know, if I'm making sense. Now, surprise. I feel like there's someone who hurt you, who did you wrong, who is going to make their way back towards you. This is the scales balancing. There's someone, could have been a two of cups energy. This could be someone who uh, there was a ghosting or something like that, hermit to the five of pentacles, or, you know, they just fell off the face of the earth and it's like, what the fuck happened? I feel like this person could make some form of unexpected return. Um, cause I'm drawn to the shark energy turning back in this direction. The scales are balancing out where you are now going to have the ball in your court court. The ball is going to be in your court. Um, I feel like that's probably why it was heavily emphasized. Don't invest in potential. Uh, don't invest in the idea. Well, potentially this person could, you know, do this or do that. Take things for face value, take people as they present themselves to be, you know, um, action talks, bullshit walks, basically don't fall for kind words or sweet gestures, uh, sweet words. Um, go by what you see, not by what you hear. Um, but yeah, I feel like you have some, there's a lot of positive change in your life coming towards you. Some of you could even have a new connection. Some of you, you could have a new connection and that's what makes someone else who did you wrong all of a sudden wanting to come back around. This is like, you know, positive change. I feel like there's a lot of positive change in regards to your career as well. Any of you dealing with legal issues, they're going to go in your favor. If you were owed money from any form of legal situation, um, 
if there's any lawsuit or anything where it's like you got hurt or someone hurt you or there's some form of settlement where someone owes you money, um, could even be someone who hurt you who owes you money. Take it however it resonates. But it feels like if you have long overdue money, um, that that uh was uh it's like a legal payout. If there's money that you've been waiting on that someone was supposed to pay you back from any form of settlement or injury thing, it feels like that money is coming towards you. Um I feels like it is. It feels like there's a dance of change. Things that are long overdue coming your way, things that are going to follow you into the long ski and the into the long term, um, could even be an actual new connection. Some of these could be a new job as well, but there's also a past energy that also is trying to make its way back towards you. Um, this could even be someone who owes you money outside of the legal thing. If there's nothing legal that you've dealt with or court things, there could be someone who owes you, um, in more ways than one making their way back and they could use money as a form of means. Like say if this person owes you actual tangible shit, or even if this is someone who's like, they, they've had your sweater for fucking years and they never gave it back. And all of a sudden now there's now they're popping up. Oh, Hey, yeah, no, I have your sweater. I was calling those stuff and I found it. I just want to treat you. They're going to use something as a form of means to get their foot back in the door with you to get back in your good graces and work their way back in. So the ball's going to be in your court in regards to that one. But I do feel like you have a lot of good stuff that was long overdue, long awaited coming your way. Um, and whatever this stuff is, it's going to follow you into the long term um, and could be a new connection as well, but something old, something new. So take that however it resonates. But Capricorn 10th house is what I got for you. That's your read. Next up, Aquarius and 11th house. What do you have going on for my aqua babies and 11th house? Ooh. Bring me a higher love. Oh, wow, that was random. I'm so raven. Uh oh. Too many, too many, too many. Mm. Ooh, you want to treat me like an option? I'll leave it like it's funny. Be careful of someone who treated you like an option wanting to make their way back into your good grace because you're doing good. It's almost like, oh, no, we can't have anyone else getting up on there. This is like, oh, wait, Aqua's doing good or Aqua's got money or this or that. And it's like, no, that should be me who gets to sit there beside them. Ugh, I don't know. It just feels like you could be in the energy where you're making a decision to drop something, drop someone. You could be dropping someone who dropped the ball on you. Uh, where it's like, uh, someone want to treat you like an option. So you're leaving them like, it's funny. That's what this feels like. Um, now the good news, it's a learning experience. Um, it just feels like you could be walking away from someone or some situation, uh, dropping someone who didn't see what they had or didn't see your value. Um, and there's a sense of you're going to, it's like, you, it's like, how do I explain this? It's like, even if it was, even if you go through like a bad breakup or something, there's a sense of taking the higher road. Uh, you're going to find yourself taking the higher road in a situation where you're going to view it as a learning experience and you're going to utilize the energy, harness it for your own sense of betterment. It's like, it's like, all right, well, this ha did this happen to me or did this happen for me? What did I learn from this? What do I gain from this? And how do I proceed moving forward? It's like, you're taking the, you're taking, um, a situation you're turning lemons into lemonades in the sense of you're trying to gain a higher perspective of what is this actually teaching you um it's it's a very mature and growth type of energy that's what this feels like um now what to avoid don't get caught back up in the sauce if someone treated you like an option or, you know, dropped the ball, they didn't see what they had when it was in front of them. And, you know, uh, for, oh, especially for those of you in regards to your work, because Hierophant could also be uh, work and career. Uh, some of you, this could even be in regards to a job. If, if a job dropped you and you could, you could end up finding something better. Now, if someone dropped you because they thought that, you know, oh, well, you know, he's got a dead end job. She's got a dead end job or they don't make this amount of money. Guess what? There's a sense of things turning around for you. And all of a sudden this bitch going to want to come through. And it's like, don't allow that shit to happen. Um, what to avoid could literally be an Aries, uh, Leo or Sag with that queen of wands energy. Um, but this just feels like, uh, don't allow 
it feels like more so in anything, it's the energy of don't allow someone to pull you back in. Um, this could be someone who likes to use sex as a form of means, as sex and sensuality as a form of means to kind of lure you back in, bait you back in. Um, because surprise, uh, Queen of Pentacles, I feel like you're going to find yourself in a very good place, especially when it comes to your career and finances. And it feels like some of you, this could be in regards to the same sex situation as well. It doesn't have to be, or someone could be fluid. Um, but there feels like there could be someone who tries to make their way back. Um, this could be someone who basically dropped you or dropped the ball, or they fumbled the ball with you, or they put you in a third party situation. You took the higher road and you moved in a different direction. And all of a sudden now this person's going to want to come back in because now they see you good, uh, see you doing good. Um, and it's like, well, I can't have anyone else getting up. That's supposed to be my seat. This is someone who feels entitled to what you have, even if they weren't there with you while you were getting it, while you were, you know, doing what you got to do to get it. That's what this feels like. Someone who basically, you know, they went off to go play elsewhere, right? And now they see what they, they say that they fumbled the ball, that they really dropped something good. And now it's like, well, shit, let me just go in there. I'll use my little charm. Uh, for some of you, I'm here in Southern charm. Um, so someone could be Southern, um, take it how it resonates. But it feels like someone who feels like, well, let me just uh, work my way in here and that's all right. I'll get them back. I'll use my sensuality, my sexuality, my charm, my weight, my looks, he, 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 he. Now I'll let them think that, you know, now I'm looking for something serious because seahorses mate for life. This is someone who says one thing, but they do another, you know, someone fumbled the ball and now they're going to try to work their way back in. And it just feels like, uh, I don't know. It just feels like it, <sighs> They knew what was in front of them when it was there. If they dropped the ball because they didn't see what was there when it was in front of them, they didn't see your value. You better see your value well enough to walk away is what it feels like. There's better, there, there's plenty of fish in the sea and there's a sense of seeing this person for whom, what they truly are. It's like, oh, now you know me. Now you want to come back. Why? Because look at me now. Uh, look at me now. I'm making paper. It's like, no, now all of a sudden they want to come in because they don't want anyone else to basically have your seat, uh, have the seat next to you. That's what this feels like. Someone kind of coming back in because they don't want someone else to basically grab a seat next to you because they're viewing it as, well, that should have been my, that used to be my girl. You, you, they're viewing it as, well, that that's supposed to be my seat. It's like, no, 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 no. That's all right. I went out and go, uh, I went out to go play with all these other options, but you were supposed to hold my seat. And now that I see that, you know, I actually, I would look good sitting next to you. So oh, be careful. Someone doesn't want you just because they like how you would being next to you would make them look. For some of you, there could literally be like an Aries who basically wants to be next to you because they, of how it makes them look. I'm just saying. Doesn't have to be, but I'm drawn to Aries with the, with the Queen of Wands energy. This is like someone who wants to basically be... Now, if this is in regards to a work thing, be careful of someone who's using you. There could be someone who is using you because they like how sitting next to you makes them look. It's like they're trying to basically be careful of someone who's basically trying to post up next to you for as long as they can for a form of means of gain in, in career. This is someone riding off of a coattail. That's what this feels like. Be careful of someone trying to ride off of a coat off your coattail, uh, especially in regards to the workplace. If you've got someone who's trying to act all, act all chummy, chummy, buddy, buddy, this could even be someone, you know, says and does things to try to fuck with your head or, you know, try, it tells you lies. Tell me lies. Tell me lies. Tell me sweet little lies about, um, it's like someone who will lie to you and feed you poison it, or some of you could even be someone who's a bit of a yes man, yes woman, uh, someone who will tell you what you want to hear um, just to basically be able to hold that spot next to you. Someone wants to sit next to you to write off of a coattail because they benefit off of you in some career standpoint. So just be mindful of that. With that said, Aquarius 11th house, that's what I got for you. That's your read. Next up, Pisces and 12th house. What do we got going on for Pisces and 12th house? Ooh, we're in the money, we're in the money. But oh shit, baby, holy shit. Ooh. Is this real? Is this real life? Oh shit. Don't get lost in the sauce now. Ooh. Okay. <coughs> well, bitch, Ten of Pentacles. Um, luck be a lady tonight. 
Uh, luck be a lady, bitch, or man, doesn't matter. It's just a song that came through. Um, you could be feeling like Lady Luck, Mr. Luck, whatever luck. I feel like there's a sense of feeling like you're right on track towards your long-term goals, your long-term stability. I feel like a lot of you are taking in the bigger picture and you are on track towards uh, fulfilling your long-term goals. <coughs> Some of you are really focused on your long term. What's the big picture for you? Now, good stuff. I feel like you're going to find yourself at a moment in time where there's a sense of taking things in, taking a look back. There could be a judgment call. You're, there could be a, a decision that you're going to make in regards to something. Um, you got the right one, baby. Uh -huh. For some of you, you could have already made some form of judgment call. This could be a judgment call in regards to your career or whatever. And this could be a judgment. There could be some form of judgment call that you have made in regards to something that would affect your long term. Um, or some of you are making a decision to do something that you've wanted to do all your life. Um, but there's a sense of you're going to come to see that that was, in fact, the best decision. You made the correct decision, um, even if there's a bit of murkiness and not uh, uncertainty, a uh, sense of not quite sure if you made the right decision or not. I feel like you're going to come to see that you did. Um, I feel like there's a form of really good turnaround for you um, that's going to affect you in the long term. Could be in regards to career, money, uh, finance, uh, stability, all that stuff, right? I just feel like long term stability, um, making a decision. Some of you could have already made a decision and you're not sure if it was the correct decision. You're going to come to see that that was, in fact, the best decision you could have ever made for yourself. Now, what to avoid? Seven cups. Don't get lost in your sauce. Don't get lost in the murkiness of the thought or the elusive, especially this ace of swords. You see the shark wrapping around it and the sword is down. There's, that brings a sense of lack of clarity. But you see the light shining through. You will come to see that, you know, uh, even if you don't see it now, there's a sense of coming to see that you didn't, that you are in fact going to make the right decision or you have in fact made the right decision. Take however resonates. I feel like I have two sets of timelines, um, but it does feel like there's a sense of making a decision uh, that is correct for you. Um, some of this could be in regards to your job or something in regards to your long term. I keep getting something that's, that's in regards to your long term, your big picture, your big scope. Um, also, if the past comes a knocking, uh, just be mindful. Uh, make, some of you, if the past were to come back, Hierophant, I'm sorry, Hermit, um, there could be an unexpected uh, reemergence of the past, in which case you might not be certain if you're making the right decision or not. It feels like whatever you decide it's going to be the correct decision for you. Some of you, it could be, this could be in regards to someone who, you know what they are, but you don't want to face the truth. It, this is like the energy of someone where it's like, because I'm literally hearing Taylor Swift, I knew you were trouble when you walked in. This is like someone coming back around, right? Judgment hermit. Uh, so this could be someone who treated you like an option or, you know, uh, they're all about, you know, the money aspect of it. I don't fucking know. Um, it, or this could even be a job, a, a job that overlooked you, right? All of a sudden wanted to basically pull, pull you back in, or this could be a job that, you know, maybe you had a career at some place and they didn't, uh, appreciate you or value you when you were there, you know? Um, and now they're trying to get you back. Um, but it feels like there could be some form of comeback around. Um, and now if this is in regards to a person though, this could be where things get a bit murky because it's like, this is like, you could, you know what someone is, you know the truth of the matter, but you don't want to face it. Even though that light is shed, you know the truth. There's a sense of ignoring the truth because the ace of swords, that's the sword of truth, but this sword is down and there's a shark wrapped around it. There could be a sense of not wanting to face the truth of a situation. Um, you could find yourself a bit murky. You could find yourself a bit lost. Uh, this could even be in regards to someone who you were with for a very long time or, or someone who you were married to or that was the goal or someone who you always imagined would always be there in your life. There could be some form of comeback around resurgence. Um, you could have a moment of... Uh, <sighs> I feel like you're, you're going to have a moment of clarity because at first you're going to be a bit murky, a bit confused, 
but then there's a sense of making the decision that's right for you and cutting through the illusion, cutting through the facade, seeing a situation and a person for what, who and what they truly are and making the decision that is ultimately the correct decision for you. Now, surprise, uh, you're going to find yourself literally having to take a moment to really take something in and contemplate. Now, for some of you, this could be a comeback around that you really have to take in and contemplate and sit on because your mind is going to be... Um, kind of all over the place because you're going to feel a bit murky because especially if any of you were dead set on the idea of this person being there in your life for, you know, however long you're going to, I don't know, this feels like it's teetering. It's like you're walking a very thin line. Um, if this were to be a private read or, you know, an individual read, um, I feel like this would be, you know, walking a thin line because I feel like there's a thin line that you're going to walk. But ultimately, it feels like regardless of whatever you choose, it will be the correct decision for you, whether you choose to actually open and accept this person back in or you choose to see something for who and what it truly is and just, you know, move on from it. Um, it just feels like a bit of a tough one. You're going to find yourself uh, treading on a thin line. What is the correct decision? If this is a comeback around, this is like, do I see myself with this person? Can I see myself with this person uh, five years from now, 10 years from now? How do I envision my life with this person? Where is their place? Uh, this is how um, you know if someone is meant to be in your life or not. This is how you know where someone stands in your life. When you see your life five years from now, 10 years from now, or when you're making plans, are they there? Are they a part of those plans? Or do you see that person as a part of your life? Do you see them there in those plans that you're making? If you see this person in those visions, if you see when you're making plans and this person is there in the back set of your mind with these plans that you're making, that's how you know what the right decision is and who this person is for you to you and where they stand in your life and where they will be in your life. Um, but yeah, Pisces 12th house, that is what I got for you. That is your read. All right, my loves. Well, if you made it this far, thank you all so very much. I absolutely love and adore every single last one of you. With that said, I hope you all have a fantastical rest of your day, rest of your night, whatever time it is where you are. I love you all. Be well, be safe, and I will catch you all on the next one. Bye.